We are taking another look at Leiden, one of the most beautiful towns in the Netherlands. This is part three of our coverage in a series that already took you on an extensive walking tour, a very organized route that we brought you. Be sure to look for that one in our collection. And we also took you on a boat ride in a different video about Leiden. Well, this is part three and we're just going to roam around the city a little bit more. It's so attractive and there were more scenes to show you, not presented in the other two movies. So let's take a closer look, wandering along the canals, enjoying the reflections and heading for the shopping streets and some historic monuments and museums. Since we've already covered the specific routings that you would enjoy on a detailed walking tour in our other video, in this movie, we're just gonna take kind of a random ramble from one beautiful part of town to another. This is kind of like a video postcard rack where we're going to look at some of the buildings. We'll see the dogs sitting out on the sidewalk and people at their terrace tables or just out for a stroll in the historic neighborhood. Sure, there are lots of monuments and important sites that you'll want to see, but one of the joys of being in a place like Leiden is just simply taking a walk and watching the bicycles. At the end of this short movie, we'll take you inside two of the main museums covering history and culture. We'll also have a look inside the modern train station, which is the transportation heart of the city. You'll find it really is worth getting up very early when you're staying in a city like Leiden with so many tranquil canals to catch the sunrise. It's usually not too windy at that time of day and it's so pretty and golden and peaceful and calm. It's something that most people would simply sleep through, but this is what they're missing. In many other cities that you'll visit, there's nothing to see at sunrise. You might be staying at a hotel and surrounded by big buildings and you can't even see the horizon. So don't bother getting up early in that case, but in cities in the Netherlands with all those canals, you're bound to find a beautiful sunrise. Blauportshaven is the small boat harbor right in the middle of town. And the broad plaza next to it is the Biestenmarkt. All around you'll find restaurants and there's a fountain in the middle, benches to sit down on. It's one of the most interesting parts of the city. With the main docking area for the little excursion boats that can take you on a canal cruise. The canal extends south and then it gets wider and is home to a number of these old-fashioned houseboats. They had been river barges, some of them a hundred years old, and now people live on them enjoying a central location right in the heart of town. Along with the boat traffic, there are lots of bicycles on the busy streets that go around this inner harbor, especially in the morning at rush hour. You've got hundreds of people going by on that beloved two-wheeled foot pump vehicle that provides the main transportation in this country. During their long history, the Dutch have developed some fundamental solutions for the climate crisis starting with windmills about 800 years ago, which they used for energy and for pumping seawater out to reclaim the land for farming. Right through today with their increasing use of bicycles. While living in a relatively dense population zone that encourages the use of bicycles, public transit, and walking as your basic transportation. The Dutch are also experts at protecting their shoreline by building effective dikes and with strict coastal zone management. Their many canals also drain water from the landscape and provide for efficient shipping. We can learn a lot from these clever Dutch. Most of these streets are shared with automobiles, but there are just so many more bicycles than cars that bicycles have the right of way. Of course, everybody's familiar with basic rules of the road and is very polite when they're driving and yield the right of way to the bicycles, which also creates peaceful conditions for pedestrians. If you did get up early and take a little walk, you might as well have breakfast at one of the most scenic locations in town along that main canal that goes through the heart of the city, 
the New Rhine. It's got lovely cafes, some of them on floating barges. The many bridges of Leiden are another lovely sight that you'll enjoy while walking around. Most Dutch cities have their canals and bridges, but it does seem that Leiden has way more of them than average, and the second most number of historic buildings after Amsterdam. Perhaps the oldest structure in town is the Burgt. It's a fortress that started as early as the 9th century as a hill of turf and clay and developed over time into this solid brick fortress, 20 meters high, providing defenders a fortified bastion with an excellent view. A few blocks over, we've got the main pedestrian shopping street of the city, Harlemerstraat, a prime spot for people watching or grabbing some inexpensive fast food. Leiden University was founded in 1575, making it the oldest in the country with 35,000 students. And there are several other smaller colleges in the city, some industrial, some trade, some technical schools, and there's a university medical center and this school for vocational education, located in the heart of the historic center. From here, let's jump over to the wonderful Leiden Central, the excellent, efficient, modern train station of the city. If you're visiting Leiden, you will probably be arriving and departing from this station because trains are definitely the best way to get around in this country. You don't need to drive. The trains will take you everywhere. And there's an efficient bus system to connect to your destination or bring you to perhaps some smaller towns that don't have a train. Dutch stations can also be a good place to grab a meal, maybe just a drink, a soda, a juice, or a takeout sandwich. That's always a very popular item here. You can eat it in the station or bring it on the train. No problem eating on the train. Just don't make a mess. It's a little shopping mall, complete with clothing stores. To Amsterdam, it takes 30 minutes, or to The Hague, 11 minutes. Train service in the morning is frequent. The first station was built here in 1842. The current one is the fourth station. It opened in 1996. The station is a busy place at rush hour, like here at 8.30 in the morning. But during the day, otherwise, it's not so crowded, and that's a good time to be making your trips when you will have no trouble getting a seat on board the train. You pay for the ride with an OV chip card. That's a debit card that you can purchase upon arrival in the country, and at many train stations, you load some money into the card and use it for all trains and trams, buses and subways throughout the nation. Out front is a busy bus station, but we can walk to our next destination. We don't even need those little shuttle vans. It takes just five minutes to walk from the station to the Museum of Ethnology for a look at cultures around the world. Then we'll continue on to the Museum of Antiquities with its display of archeological treasures. Leiden is home to the Museum Folkenkunde, or in English, the National Museum of Ethnology. It's a culture history museum featuring artifacts and presentations from many countries around the world. It can be considered the first ethnographic museum in Europe because it was the first one that displayed artifacts as more than just curiosities. From its earliest beginnings in 1816, it was designed to conduct scientific research and educate the public using the artifacts to illustrate basic cultural principles. They have a large collection of items from Native America, from the plains up to the Arctic. The museum developed a dramatic and innovative way to present information about the cultures using projections on the wall of video and still images, turning what had been large, empty, boring, blank walls into vibrant displays of a living culture. The sensitive way in which objects are presented elevates them from mere daily artifacts to true works of art. After enjoying that large room of North American objects, you'll move to the Pacific Island collection with a stunning number of images from New Guinea with carved and painted ancestral gods. Polynesia is also represented with some young Tahitian dancers and 
carved objects from throughout the Polynesian Triangle, including these Maori figures with carved tattoos from New Zealand, and a variety of fascinating fish hooks. Some eerie skeletons backed up by another video celebrate Mexico's Day of the Dead, along with native fabrics and ceramic items, and quite valuable pottery from Central America. The museum's first major acquisitions were 5,000 items from Japan that were collected in the 1830s at a time when the Dutch were the only Europeans allowed inside Japan, making these items unique and extremely valuable. You might recall that Japan closed itself off to the outside world from the 17th through the mid-19th centuries, but the Netherlands was the only European country that maintained an active trading agreement operated by the Dutch East India Company for 200 years based in this village in Nagasaki, as we learned from a friendly museum visitor. The Japanese Empire decided that um, there had too much Western influence. There were the Dutch and the Portuguese. And the Portuguese protested and didn't want to leave and they got kicked out. Uh, the Dutch tried, he didn't want to fight the Japanese and he decided, okay, well, if they want us to leave, let's go. Let me dismantle everything. I'm not leaving them one nail. So because he dismantled everything and the Emperor heard that, he said, here is a guy who really follows my orders. <laughs> so. And then another advisor of the emperor said, maybe it's not such a good idea to completely isolate ourselves and leave one channel of communication uh, out for the, uh, to, to the outside world. Mm -hmm. So he invited the Dutch back and gave them this artificial island on the coast of Nagasaki, which was originally constructed for the Portuguese and gave them effectively a monopoly. He was very interested in uh, guns. Cannons, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they made good money on cannons. <laughs> and the Dutch took the ceramics. Um, yeah, ceramics and all kinds of other goods, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. precious metals, yeah, yeah whatever. How do you know so much about that? That's History Channel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. The Chinese collection got started way back in the early 1800s by King William the First, who founded his Royal Cabinet of Curiosities with some of these Chinese items that were later added to the main ethnographic collection. The museum moved to its present location in 1937, which underwent major expansion in the 1990s. And now it is joined with two other Dutch museums to form the National Museum of World Cultures, with a total collection of nearly half a million items, including the famous Benin bronzes from Africa, the museum also has some fun with contemporary and innovative temporary displays, such as this short black and white video that challenges your mind. This is not a museum that's only for displaying objects. It's an active research museum involved with cultures of the past and today. The museum's stated mission is to awaken our curiosity about the enormous cultural diversity that enriches the world in which we are all linked together to increase the understanding of these mutual bonds, which allows us to inspire an open attitude to the world and help to shape a global community. Finally, to complete our Leiden visit, we're taking another pleasant walk along the canals, just about 800 meters from one museum to the next. Visiting now the Museum of Antiquities, a fine archeological collection with major holdings from ancient Egypt, Rome, Greece, and elsewhere. This Egyptian temple was going to be submerged under the Nile waters because of construction of the Aswan High Dam, but the Netherlands played a role in the rescue operation. To show their gratitude, the Egyptians gave this temple to the Dutch people. We'll see more of Egypt in a moment. There's a large collection of Roman statues carved in marble and a lot of jewelry and household artifacts as well as glassware. Ancient Rome did occupy the southern Netherlands up to the Rhine River, placing Leiden right at the frontier where the Romans built a fortification, protecting them from the barbaric Germanic tribes on the other side. There are four permanent exhibitions here featuring the Roman, Greek, Etruscan, and Egyptian with Near East, 
And then there's an exhibit on Dutch civilizations as well. Among the many Greek treasures are dozens of vases from Mycenae and Corinth, depicting mythological and daily life in their painted figures. Also, with the Greeks, you get some very poignant statues commemorating the dead. Some of these are carvings from tombstones, bidding farewell to the beloved departed. The collection of this museum began with an inheritance of about 150 antiquities that was bequeathed to Leiden University back in 1743, when it was placed on public display. The collection grew with further purchases, and in the early 19th century, the museum led various expeditions to do archaeology in the Mediterranean area. The large array of Etruscan tombs is a highlight of the collection. Ancient Greek statues date from the Archaic into the Classical through the Hellenistic periods, when lifelike poses seemed to be in motion, including some gilded bronze. From Mesopotamia, we have the world's oldest form of writing, a realistic model of an ancient Roman house from Pompeii with an atrium and open courtyard, but the red tiles couldn't protect it from the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. A large part of this collection consists of many objects covering 2,000 years of the ancient history of Egypt. Statues, there's jewelry, there are mummies and sarcophagi and funeral objects depicting daily life, and there are canopic jars used in that mummification process. This comprehensive collection also reaches much further back in time into the Stone Age, where we see the crudely chipped and finely polished stone tools. With my graduate degree in archaeology, I feel right at home, and you will discover there is something for everybody to enjoy here in one of Europe's best museums of antiquity. We have more movies about Leiden and many more videos about the Netherlands that you can find in our collection. We upload a new travel movie every week, so if you want to be informed, please subscribe and click that little alarm bell so you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up? And we always welcome comments down below. Or if you have questions about the destination, make note and we'll answer them. Thanks for watching.